Your Holiness, thank you so much again for to find the time to speak with Newsweek today. Um, as a first question, I would like to ask if you can explain to us who are the Ahmadi Muslims and why they differ from other branches of Islam. You see, Ahmadiyat is one of the sects in Islam. And there are almost 72 sects in Islam, or rather 73, including Ahmadiyat. It was prophesied by the Prophet of Islam that in the latter days people will forget the true teachings of Islam. They will not be practicing Muslim. Although Quran will be remain in this intact in the same shape, but it will be misconstrued by so-called scholars. And uh, at that time, a person will appear whose title will be Messiah and Mahdi, the guided one, and who will revive the Islamic teachings, the original Islamic teachings. We believe that that person has come in the person of Mirza Ullah Mahmud of Qadian, the founder of the Ambiya community. And he is that Messiah and Mahdi whose advent was foretold by the Prophet of Islam 1,400 years ago, right? So this is how the Jamaat Ahmadiyya, the Ahmadiyya community was formed. Other Muslims believe that the person will come, as it is a saying of the Prophet of Islam, that the person will come in the later days. But they think that the Mahdi is a different man he will appear from among Muslims, and Messiah, the Jesus Christ, will descend from heaven, and uh, they both will both join hands and reform the world. Mm -hmm. So we say no. We believe, and Quran categorically explains it, that Jesus Christ, it appeared that he has died, but later on, after having had some treatment, he survived and he traveled to the eastern part of the world. And that is, we believe that is in Kashmir. So, and no person can remain alive for 2,000 years. When the Holy Prophet of Islam وسلم, said that Messiah will come, he meant that a person will come on the same with the same teaching and footsteps as the Messiah of Moses came. And at, during his time, religious wars will end. There will not be any need of religious wars because the permission of religious wars is given only when the opponent is trying to finish the religion or attacking your religion. They intend to f erase the Islamic teaching or the religion of Islam from the face of the earth. So it is not happening nowadays in this way. Only those who are against Islam, they are preaching against Islam. So the founder of the Ahmadiyya community said that since the Holy Prophet of Islam had said it categorically in one of his saying that the re religious war will come to end in the later days. So now anyone who's, who does jihad in the name of religion will lose. And the true jihad is now, as it is the literary meaning of the jihad is, that struggle, strife. So the true jihad is that now you try to reform your inner self and become a true Muslim through the teachings of Islam. And secondly, you do preaching with arguments as the opponents of Islam are doing. Christians are doing, other religions are doing preaching. So we should also preach and tell the people the true teaching of Islam. This is how we can bring the people into the fold of Islam. So this is our belief and this is why the MDA community was formed.
and established. Mm, thank you. Then, there are several reports mm. documenting how the Hamadi Muslims have been and are still persecuted in parts of the world. Why do you think this is happening and what can we do to stop it? You see, as I have already said, the one difference is in belief. We believe that the person who was foretold by the Holy Prophet of Islam has come. It was a metaphor. It did not mean that Jesus himself will descend from the heaven. Other Muslims say that you believe that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian is a prophet. And no prophet can come after the Holy Prophet of Islam since he is the seal of prophets. Eh? Now, the title of prophethood has now been stopped by Allah, they say. We say we cannot refuse to accept any attribute of Allah. All the attributes of Allah can never be finished. So, he has the power to send the prophets. But what we believe is that the seal of the prophet means that a subordinate prophet can come who will revive the true teachings of Islam. And the title has been given to him by Allah and even the Holy Prophet himself. In one of his sayings, he has four times mentioned that the person who is supposed to come in the latter days will come with the title of prophethood. They say now, since you say this is a prophet, the founder of the Amdiya community is a prophet, and the Holy Prophet says, I am the last of the prophets, and you and sealed of the prophets, so it means you do not believe in his finality of prophethood. And therefore, you are not Muslims. That is the main reason. But we say that even if you say that Jesus Christ will come from the heaven, he also had the title of prophethood. He was a prophet of Allah. That is what we believe. That is what Quran mentioned. Mm -hmm. So when he comes, that means he will come with the same title. And if you say that he is coming, going to come here in the latter days, that he is also going to break the seal of the prophet. Because then he will be the last prophet. Hmm? So this is, they do not want to understand. Actually, it is because of the one's personal grudges and Western interests of the so-called scholars and mullahs and extremists. Otherwise, logically, they don't have any argument. In short, you can say that we believe that the founder of the Amdiya movement is a prophet, but a subordinate prophet who has come under the umbrella of the Holy Prophet of Islam, وسلم, without any new law, without any new book, without anything else apart from the truth of the Quran and the Holy Prophet. And they say, no, whatever it is, we cannot believe that any person can come again with the title of prophethood. So this is the reason. This is why they are against us. This is why they are persecuting us. And this is the main issue nowadays in Pakistan. And the main issue nowadays is that Ahmadis believe that Mirza Ulam Ahmad, the founder of the Ahmadi community, is a prophet. This, that means they believe that the Holy Prophet of Islam was not the seal of the prophets. According to them, they are undermining the status of the Holy Prophet of Islam. This is why they are liable to be killed. They are liable to be persecuted. And this is what is happening. <laughs> Thank you. And um, now I would like to talk about a little bit about your role. Um, what does it mean to be a caliph? And what are your tasks for the, the community? The caliph means successor, right? Successor of the founder of the Ahmadiyya community. This is why the title is Khalifatul Masih, the successor of the Messiah of Islam, right? And the role is the same for which the founder of the Ahmadiyya community was sent. That is 
this, with the title of Messiah and where he says, with this title, I have come to reform Muslims and teach them the true teaching of Islam and to preach the true teaching of Islam to other religions and other people of the world. In short, he says, I have come for two main purposes. One, to bring humanity closer to their creator. Second, to make the humankind realize the responsibility towards their fellow beings. And this is the main, two main purposes. And the same purpose is of the Khalifa and successor. And that is what I have been doing, I am trying to do. And this is what our community is doing all across the world. Hmm? To make the people realize their duty towards their creator, to make the, the people realize their duty towards their fellow being. And what are the main challenges that you encounter covering this role? Now, see, the world is materialistic. And especially in the developed world, you are just indifferent about religion. Mm -hmm. hmm? You don't bother whether you are Christian, you are Jew, or Buddhist, or even the percentage of atheists has increased than any of the follower of the religion. Hmm? Yeah. So, the, even following, religious following is decreasing in the Western world and the developed world. So the main challenge is that, that just make the people realize their duty towards their creator, to realize that there is one creator, all living God, hmm? who is a provider and sustainer of human being and everything we can see in this world or even any other world which we cannot see. But what do you think is happening that so many people feel more and more detached from religion? whatever religion it is. Because, you see, one thing is that so-called scholars, religious scholars, are not practicing scholars. Every now and then, even among Muslims, mullahs, among Christian priests, there are scandals coming up. And then they, the people have become more materialistic. Now, the, the lust or the, the charm of the world is more uh, attractive to them than to realize their duty towards their creator. This is the main reason, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why we first say that you must accept that there is one God who is the creator, who is a provider and sustainer. This is why in the very, very first chapter of the Holy Quran, it starts from the verse that Allah is the provider and sustain, sustainer of all the worlds, right? No matter whether you are a Muslim, you are Jew, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, Sikh, or even if you, if you do not hold any religion, Allah is providing you. Even I always say to atheists says that Allah is providing you, whether you bow before him or not, you worship him or not but he is the provider. <laughs> huh? So this is the main challenge, that people realize that there is one creator, one God. And there's the main challenge, and when the people realize it, they do accept. I have some, quite a number of examples whereby the people have uh, accepted that there's the creator. Once they accepted that there's a creator, then they accepted the Amdiya community. And um, thank you. Um, also, talking about the, the Hamadi community in the UK, um, is there any particular reason why the headquarters are in the UK? You see, here in the UK, UK Jamaat is an old Jamaat. Our first mosque was built here in 1924. Mm -hmm. So it's a well established Jamaat. Mm -hmm. When the law was enacted against Ahmadis, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the head of the Ahmadiyya community was stopped doing all the practices or even speak about Islam. 
then he had to migrate because he could not discharge his duties while sitting here, there in Rawa, Pakistan, without the contact of the Ahmadis, neither there in that particular small town nor elsewhere in the world. So they tried to make him idle. So this is why he had to migrate. And once, since once he migrated, then the first choice was that since the community, as I have said, was uh, well established here, so he came here. Here we had better setup. And when, because even before Pakistan came to existence, before the partition, India was the colony of uh, British. So we had old relations with the British people. And uh, the language barrier was also not in existence. Mm -hmm. So this is why instead of going to Germany and learn German <laughs> and to France to learn French, it, it was better decided by the, 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 the then uh, head of the Amjia community that he should migrate to London. And secondly, we had very well established community here and better set up here. And uh, this is how, even if you can go to Ghana, People have, even in Canadian Prime Minister is inviting me that to come and settle there. Ghanian are saying that I should settle there, but UK is the hub of the whole of the world. You see, here we can better control all our missions and all our activities all across the world. So it's also a strategic reason. Yes. <laughs> okay. It, and what are the relations between the community and the UK government? <clears throat> we always have good relations with every government, wherever Ahmadis are residing. Uh, we are law-abiding people. Mm -hmm. We say the love of your country is part of your faith. Mm -hmm. This is why we have good relations with the government and everywhere, every part of the world. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I would like you, if you could send a message to humanity, to the, to, to the human people that are living currently in this world where there are dozens of conflicts, where we have been experiencing the worst refugee crisis since World War II, and where we are experiencing also increasing extremism and increasing violence, what would that message be? You see, the message is that respect each other and each other's values. Don't play with the religions of others. Don't play with the sentiments of others. Don't be boastful of being uh, superior. All humankind is the same thing. Caste, color, and creed is nothing. So if you realize this thing, you can peacefully live in the world. So every country should respect other country. Every nation should respect other nation. All the politicians should respect other people. So I don't like what Trump is saying. I think your next question going to be might be about Trump. So, if he respects America, Americans will be respected. If he does not, then even small countries will behave in the same way. Whatever he has said about some of the third world countries that, uh, you see, he, he used very filthy words about them. And what happened? And he says we should try to um, uh, bring Norwegians into our country. And what Norwegians now have said? Huh? They have used the same word for America. Yes. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> so It's been must... in the news. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yes. So we should respect each other. This is how we can survive. And the common issue is one creator. Believe in one creator. Then it will be okay. Thank, Thank you very much for Thank your you. time. Thank you.